Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another part of this gyro flow series that I'm doing. This is part number five, where we stabilize footage from any camera using the accelerometer, the flight controller data. You could also use a GoPro or an Insta360 to record the gyro data, but we're just gonna do it right off of our flight controller and we're actually gonna be using a cell phone to do this, just to prove that we can stabilize anything. So let's dive right in. Okay, so what is gyro flow? It's an advanced open source gyro assisted video stabilization for cinematography, drone video, and much more. Gyroflow has been around since 2020, but the all new version is so much easier to use and it's not fiddly. It's really awesome. Right out of the box, you install it, you can start using it right now. This software is packed with a ton of features. It has more features than Real Steady Go and it works with almost any camera and gyro combination. So you can use it with your cinema camera. You could use it with your GoPro. You can use it with a run cam. You can use it with your Sony camera. You can use it with almost anything that has gyro data or you can add gyro data and match it with any camera. So like I said, this is a multi-part video series and this is part number five. And we are going to explore stabilizing footage from any source. Uh, whether it's a cinema camera or some other sort of camera that you have mounted on a drone or not on a drone But what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna strap a cell phone to the top of a drone And we're gonna use the flight controller data to smooth everything out Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get connected to my quad Go to the black box data logging tab here, and you can see there is some information here I did erase the flash previously so I knew what kind of data I was working with so what we're gonna do is go ahead and activate mass storage device. Okay, now that we have our flight controller mounted as a hard drive, we can go to the black box explorer and we can locate the file. So it was flight number two. We're gonna go ahead and open that up. And here we can see this is the flight information that we needed. And we're gonna go ahead and export this. And I already copied the file off of the phone, which is right here. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and open up the flight footage, which is this file here directly off of my phone. Now you'll see that it says the lens profile is missing, so I doubt there is a lens profile for a Samsung phone. And I do not see one. Now you can create your own. There's a process you can go through using some imagery and to calibrate it. Um, we are not gonna do that today. Uh, I did a little bit of searching and I did find there was a Sony camera, this FX6, that actually matches the profile, or at least it says that it does, so it will allow me to move forward. Now, this is probably not the best way to do it. You need to create your own profile or find one that somebody else has already created, but in this case, for this example, we're just gonna go ahead and move forward with that. You could use the low-pass filter if you're looking to cut off certain frequencies. I'm just gonna leave it the way it is for the moment. Um, now, this is where we need to go ahead and pull in the motion data off of the flight controller. So here it is, here's the file we saved, and it should bring in this information here. Now, I can see that from the time that the quad arms to the time that the data starts is the same here. So we need to figure out exactly what that is. So that was at about 13 seconds, and here it's about 38 seconds, so we need to look at the difference. So I'm thinking about a rough 26 seconds uh, difference there with a 20 second search size. Hopefully that will find it. So let's go ahead and just try to auto sync that. So it actually looks like that worked. As you can see here, um, the drone takes off right here where that gyro did is. So that looks like that did match up. So I'm gonna go ahead and set an endpoint here. So we don't need any of this stuff before. And I will go ahead and mute it. Now I can already see that it's trying to stabilize, so uh, that's good. Uh, here's where your settings are for that. Um, I have it, you can do no smoothing, so you can see what it looks like just with the lens distortion. There are all sorts of different types of uh, stabilization you can do, just do velocity dampening or per access, you can lock the horizon, um, or you can turn off smoothing altogether and it just uses the lens profile, so you can see what that looks like. And then if we wanted to add like 3D, that's what it's doing with the 3D. It's not too bad. Um, 
You can also do velocity dampening on, on all access and pick, you know, how much on each access that you want to stabilize. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, of course, the field of view, you can zoom out. You can see here that it is, it is working there. It's synced up with the data and it's trying to make the correction. So it is doing it. I'm going to go ahead and set our field of view back to one. And you can change the cropping if you want to do no cropping. Um, you know, sometimes you have to do you have to do your own field of view adjustment, um, or you can set it to static crop, where you also just set your field of view and it doesn't move. Um, or we could do a dynamic crop, which is what I'm going to do, where it kind of shifts around and moves. So yeah, it looks like it's working out pretty decent. Um, I'm just going to go with these settings here. Um, all these settings are correct for what we're doing. So let's go ahead and export. So this is what the final footage ends up looking like. It is not too bad. Um, there are some bumps in here. It's a little bit wobbly in places. Uh, it didn't smooth everything out. I don't know that the gyro data from the flight controller is the best source. Um, you know, you may be able to, if you're using a cinema rig, it would probably be best to strap a GoPro or some other sort of gyro logging device. But overall, it does look a lot better than the original footage, which is right here. Um, there was no stabilization on the cell phone or anything. I made sure all that was off, but uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely uh, takes out some of the bobbles side to side, but the little micro jitters are still there. Like I said, if somebody knows how to fix that uh, in the comments, let me know. I don't think I will ever be flying with a cell phone again. I just <laughs> did this as an experiment to prove that it could be done. I think it did a pretty great job of stabilization. And again, if you guys are interested in Gyroflow, it is free open source software. You can download it in the link in the description. And uh, if you guys do use it and enjoy it, I encourage you to donate to the developers. They did a great job with this software. Thank you for sticking around till the end of the video. Please be sure to check out the other parts in this series as they are very informative and have lots of information about Gyroflow. As always, if you enjoy my content, please leave a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, and consider subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next one.